Thank you, first of all, the City Club for inviting me. Um, this is a really wonderful forum to be speaking in front of. Um, my name is Ali Alberry. Um, for the past probably two and a half years, I've been pretty much fighting nonstop um, on behalf of the homeless in the city of Eugene. And as most people know here, the focus has pretty much been on uh, sleep as a human right. Um, first, I'd like to talk about what that doesn't mean, because there's been a whole lot of uh, misunderstandings about what sleeps is and what we're trying to do. Um, sleep stands for safe, legally entitled emergency places to sleep. And that word entitled has been misused a lot. And you know, by entitled, we're not standing here saying everyone deserves free housing. Every, we're not saying that, that people are owed something necessarily. What we're simply saying is that the right to sleep is a fundamental human right that needs to be, ex needs to be respected. And if there are no places for people to sleep, people still have to be allowed to sleep. And you know, Eugene is a very unique city. You know, a lot of people, I mean, I hear it all the time, people say, why are there so many homeless people in Eugene? And to be honest, compared to other college towns, there aren't really that many more homeless people in Eugene than anywhere else. Um, Eugene's homeless population is well above the national average, but when you take into consideration other mid-sized college towns, Boulder, Colorado, Ann Arbor, Michigan, Austin, Texas, just to be a few, um, the homeless population of Eugene really isn't that significant. Um, what's significant about Eugene's homeless population is its visibility. And you know what, what we've been saying, you know, the downtown problem of the past 30 years is, is really a good example of that. And I, I have really come to the conclusion that Eugene doesn't necessarily have more homeless people than other places. You just see them more. And one of the main reasons you see them more is because Eugene does not have adequate shelter. And that's where the whole you know, sleep issue comes in. Um, the camping ban in Eugene has been enacted since 1983. It's been 30 years now that for homeless people, sleeping on public land is completely against the law everywhere in both city limits and also the county has a similar regulation on county limits. And that law was passed um, as a result of something called the Vagrancy Task Force of 1983. Um, we're going back to the Reagan era where all of a sudden mass homelessness became a brand new problem. And the coalition of Eugene citizens came together to try to solve this problem. And they came up with a few recommendations. Their main recommendation was to limit camping on public land, which had always been allowed. Um, their recommendation to, to deal with that consequence was to open public and private campgrounds throughout the city and the county. Um, the city council in 1983 decided to enact the camping ban, but 30 years later, there still hasn't been any public or private places open for people to sleep. And whereas in 1983, when the camping ban was passed, there was probably four to 500 homeless people in the city of Eugene. We are now in 2013, where the one night count, which is considered an undercount, counted 17, over 1,700 people last year. Um, in addition, the Lane County Board of Education says there's nearly 2,500 people in Oregon schools who are homeless, 2,500 children. So the problem with homelessness here, you know, it, it, it's, it's, again, a widespread issue. But the main crux of the issue that, that the sleeps people have been battling with is the fact that there are less than 1,000 shelter beds in this entire city, and there are at least 1,700 people, probably many more, that have no legal place to sleep. And you know, for the past 30 years, their existence has literally been criminalized. And you know, I want to take this moment to say, you know, the sleeps is not a criticism of, of what has been done or what hasn't yet been done. Um, everyone would love more housing. Everyone would love more shelter. Everyone wants to solve homelessness, and we keep looking at that long-term thing about how do we solve the homeless problem. For many of us who work among the homeless, it's it's kind of a realization of we're not going to solve that problem. It's not solvable. Uh, homelessness is a consequence of capitalism, it's a consequence of the fact that there are never going to be enough jobs for everyone, and it's a consequence of real big holes in our social safety net regarding mental illness and drug addiction treatment. You know, we're never going to solve the problem. No matter how much housing we try to build, we're never going to be able to build enough of our current resources. And in the meantime, there's a group of people who literally live like refugees. They wander around every night and they have no place to sleep. And up until this summer, there were always certain places in Eugene where we allowed them to sleep and sort of looked the other way. Um, the West Eugene wetlands has become the biggest example of that, where, uh, as Mary mentioned, in last June it was evacuated and over 200 people, some who had been out there for years, were left with no place to be. Um, these sweeps have also occurred on the riverbanks and on other places throughout the city. 
And so currently you have a homeless population that's more visible than it's ever been. Um, going back to Sleeps for a second, you know, Sleeps was, the, uh, in many ways, the brainchild of Jesus. He's sitting right in front of me. Um, that was a big part of it also, though. And Sleeps really came from the realization that, you know, we, we are in a terrible problem here where there aren't enough places to sleep. And when we talk about legally entitled, going back to that entitlement, the reason we say that people are entitled to the right to sleep is because um, specifically in the Ninth Circuit, um, federal courts have ruled that when there is no adequate shelter, arresting people and punishing them for sleeping is considered cruel and unusual punishment. And that decision rests on the fact that sleeping is not a choice. Most crimes we commit are a choice. If you steal, that's a choice. Even if you're drinking in an open container, you chose to do that. But in criminalizing sleep when there's no other options, we're literally punishing people for doing something that every single creature on the planet has to do. Um, and in 2007, in a case uh, out of Los Angeles, the Ninth Circuit Court of Appeals found that this was unconstitutional. And both the city of Los Angeles, as well as other cities throughout the West Coast, uh, have conformed their laws around sleeping and homelessness to reflect this fact. Um, in the city of Los Angeles, people are allowed to sleep on the sidewalk at night. Same with Portland. In Seattle, there are many tent camps. Most places up and down the West Coast, they've, they've done something to, to deal with the fact that it's unconstitutional to be punishing people for sleep. But in Eugene, we haven't done that. And so, you know, when the Sleeps campaign came out last December, the, the point we were trying to make to the city and the county and otherwise is you have this entire population of people who are mostly hidden who we're not going to be able to build housing for anytime soon. And you either need to just stop arresting them at night, or better off, you can designate a place where people can sleep. Um, last December, we went out on the Free Speech Plaza, a big protest to put this point forth. And the very next day, we were shut down by the county administrator who claimed uh, health and safety violations. Um, this issue, as well as the uh, subsequent curfew closing that happened a month later, ended up uh, in a court hearing in June, July. Uh, we spent a lot of time in court over this issue, and um, two subsequent decisions were issued a week apart, and those decisions basically stated that the county uh, violated, actually specifically my constitutional rights, by closing the plaza a day after the protest started because such such closings, um, which I'm sure um, the professor next to me will explain better, there's something called the, the time, place, and manner restrictions, where any time you uh, cut down First Amendment rights, you need to, to follow four standards. And those standards weren't followed in my case. And um, we went out there again, of course, <laughs> the day later after my case was, uh, in both cases were settled. And um, four weeks later, the county evicted sleeps again, um, again for health and safety regulations, at least they waited a month this time. Um, and whereas, you know, I have my own criticisms around that, I'm only given eight minutes, so I'm not gonna go into that too much. But needless to say, sleeps is still out there to today, um, and there are other groups called Food Bills which have branched off on sleeps, and they're still camping on public land, mainly because they have nowhere to go. Um, and they're probably going to continue to be out there until further notice. Um, they've been cited by the city. The Google camp's been cited three times in the past five days. They've been threatened with arrest. They constantly have to move. But what you really have in Eugene right now is a modern-day refugee population. I don't really see any difference. And, you know, we can argue all we want about whether homelessness is a choice and whether they should get jobs or not. But at the end of the day, there's a huge population that literally is not allowed to sleep. And us out there are saying sleep is a human right. Please let them sleep. And I'll get a pass.